Okay, time for a video. I shall have to be quick as I'm going to school in a bit to uh, start the teaching day. However, let's get straight down to business. As always, my disclaimer. So you've seen it before. You can read it. I'm not going to say anything more about it. So, uh, okay, this is for Dr. Awani. He uh, posted this letter in our prepare oet group we need some more members it's uh, quite low but we'll see so he posted this i think this is the first one he sent me so we're going to have a look at this and i'm going to make some comments on grammar and uh, vocab structure etc uh, i'm not going to look at the case notes um, as i say just in case they are a copywriter besides uh, we don't really need them for the purpose of this exercise so let's have a look. <clears throat> so I'm going to save the changes and we'll see. Okay, now, first things first. Now, if you've got the DOB here, you don't really need to include the age. It's repetition, so we can get rid of that. But Mr. Collister, whose features are suggestive of. Now, uh, it's usually a good idea to not use abbreviations. What you ought to do is spell it out first use, and you can use abbreviations for every subsequent use. Okay, so I would write that out in full at first. Okay, for further assessment and management. Now, you could end that sentence there because having would be appreciated is nonsense. Would be appreciated by whom doing what so um if you said your assessment and management would be appreciated but how this sentence works we don't actually need that or i would appreciate your assessment and management you know or again your assessment and management would be uh, appreciated but we can get rid of that and that will be fine a further assessment and management okay now um usually it's not good to simply drop in a sentence such as you know like with no connection or you know right uh in terms of cohesion and coherence it's not good to simply drop in a sentence without any connection to the previous sentence or paragraph i i mentioned this in a video i made yesterday about uh linking words, cohesion, and uh, coherence, etc. So the idea is to have some kind of, as I um, explain, some introductory phrase or gambit, as it's sometimes um, sometimes called, you know, regarding his social medical history or something such as that. So you need some kind of a, a phrase here regarding his social or medical history or blah, 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 you know, or for your information blah 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 okay now factory forearm factory foreman who mostly has busy who is now one thing in this particular letter the grammar does need some attention with verb forms word order articles etc as we will see so who is mostly busy at work okay and Simply saying that without drawing any connection to anything else doesn't, doesn't quite work. Why is he busy? What connection does that have with, you know, with his, his illness? Why he's come to see you? What connection does that have? Now here we've got a separate a sentence. In addition, he has felt. Well, why is it simple? But, well, right, first, why is it present perfect? If he's still feeling it, it should be he has been yeah so if you're going to use uh, that make it present perfect uh continuous it has been feeling because it's ongoing and it's not finished and why is this two separate sentences you know uh who is mostly busy at work which has left him feeling tired and stressed now that would be interesting if you were to connect it to the overall purpose uh, of the letter. Now, 
Again, I mentioned this in my videos yesterday. The new writing criteria coming into force in August includes that of purpose. So it's got to be clear right from the start what you want the reader to do. Why, you know, in other words, why are you writing this? Okay, so refer for further assessment and management. Okay, I'm not, I can't remember from the case notes if there was anything else, if, he, if they wanted you to do a particular thing, give them some kind of a, a test or etc. But that's something that you have to uh, keep in mind. So we've, we've got two sentences here that seem kind of, of dropped in and it's not connecting anything. You know, so use, you know, using your social medical history paragraph, you use it to set up the background to the, so you are making a request. I want you to do blah, blah, blah. And then the social and medical history uh, gives details that fill in the background to this visit, 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 visit. And that explains why you have to do it. Okay, so on 26th of the 10th, he presented with complaining. Right, well, first, it's either with complaints of or with the complaint of or he presented complaining of. So if we get rid of with. Okay, now you want to avoid this. This looks like notes, note form. And what they want you to do is specifically avoid writing in note form. I want you to write complete sentences. So this kind of looks like a note. So uh, he presents it, so right. And also another thing, we usually put the, um, the patient's name at the beginning of paragraph or the patient and then whichever pro uh, noun you use. So I'll put Mr. Collister, uh, should be capitalized now, Mr. Collister, presented complaining of right knee pain, which was exacerbated when going upstairs. So you've got to include your verbs and your pronouns here. Okay. Although, and why is there a comma? No need for that comma. Although the patient had, the patient was overweight, yet his BP was low at, because you're supposed to write these, as Vitar says, as complete sentences, right? No note forms, no acronyms, abbreviations. It's got to be complete grammatically complete sentences because it's an English test. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Yet his BP was low, blah, blah, blah. Therefore he, now did he commence himself? No. If it's passive, he was, or I, so either I commenced him on, I prescribed, or he was a, a commenced on. Now, sometimes, right now, I know you all think passive, passive, passive must be passive because it's formal, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but only if it's appropriate and if it works. You can use it, but don't overuse it. So, and weight reduction was advised. Well, who advised him? Was it you? Then why not use active voice? Therefore, I prescribed ibuprofen and advised him on weight reduction. Isn't that that better than he was commenced and weight reduction was advised? We know who did the action. You did it. So no need for passive. Now you can use passive in some instances, uh, instances, you would have to use passive. For example, if you were one of a team, like in a hospital or a clinic or outpatient, you know, and uh, the patient had come and someone else had initially seen them prescribed etc then you could use it you know because you are on duty and you didn't do do the actions before but you are doing them now so you would use it because you don't know who gave him this who examined him if it was a nurse another doctor etc 
But if he's coming to see um, you, or you're his, G, uh, you're his, uh, his GP, then why not he's active? Okay. Uh, subsequently, on a follow-up visit, nine weeks later, he started developing... No, right, right. Now, using a uh, simple past here, it sounds like he started developing his eye pain and dizziness on the visit. Well, that's not true. That would be kind of strange. So he comes to see you in the surgery. This is, oh, this pain, it's just started. Well, of course it hasn't. So it started before he came to see you, yeah? So we should either use, I don't know, past perfect, present uh, perfect, etc. So subsequently, on a follow up visit nine weeks later, uh, he complained of having, or, you know, of having developed. So we have to use a different verb form because this reads as if it started when he came in for a visit, which is uh, obviously uh, not true. So what was that? He said, nine weeks later, he reported uh, having the dizziness and pain in eyes, pain in his eyes. Uh, okay. However, the BP, the BP, what? The particular BP, his blood pressure. Now, again, if you're not, I mean, we know what it is, uh, BP, but if you're using these abbreviations all the, the time, it looks like notes. However, his BP was not much different. Uh, what so um, well there's um, not much different I suppose you could say that I, I'd probably say uh, was similar to compared to the previous reading you keep missing prepositions sorry articles and pro nouns to make this uh, complete sentence moreover the patient reported feel in tiredness uh, and don't need that comment. And due to busy again, pro pronoun the possessive, his busy schedule at work. Uh, the lifestyle. Um, did you say something about lifestyle and diet restrictions? You say something about weight reduction was advised. So that's kind of uh, diet restrictions, but you didn't specifically mention anything else. I think in the case notes it was talking about he was encouraged to do some exercise because he didn't he wasn't exercising or something. So this seems like something that is dropped in that you didn't mention previously. Okay. More of a patient than a dentist nurse and a busy schedule at work. The lifestyle and diet restrictions uh, he was advised. Uh, about were not successful. At this time, certain laboratory tests have done, well, were done, because we know exactly when it was. And what's what kind of tests? So that's a very short sentence. Hmm, okay. Oh, on 4th of 699, today his lab reports revealed abnormalities in blah, 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 blah. Unfortunately, his condition not improved and declined in the vision has reported. Well, if it's present perfect passive, it should be has been. But why would it be has been reported? Has been reported by whom? By the patient? Why not simply say he, you know, Mr. Collister? Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Collister's uh, condition has not improved. And he also reports a uh, decline in his vision or decrease in his eyesight or something such as that. Okay. So, again, why is it passive? He's standing, I mean, he's come to see you today. He's standing or sitting in front of you. Why is it passive? He said, he reported, he mentioned, he spoke about, he told me etc yeah okay
unmoved and uh, position has not improved and his eyesight has also uh, worsened. Okay, that would do. Okay, in view of the above, I, uh, well, I believe he is a suspected. Why would, uh, so either I suspect or I believe, we don't need two, we don't need two verbs which are not exactly synonyms but pretty close. I believe he has an IDDM. Therefore, I'm finished being the FKO as much as appropriate, so any queries do not contact me. Okay, so we can see a fair bit of grammar. Um, so, in summary, let's, what can we say? So, um, for cohesion, we need some kind of gambit, introductory expressions, not simply drop in, dropping in sentences with no connection. Uh, we also need to look at, um, at grammar. There's quite a lot of grammar errors in this. There's some word order. Also, you've got to watch use of passive and pronoun use, his, 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 uh, etc. Uh, some verb forms. Yeah, so as you can see, there's quite a bit of uh, grammar to have a look at uh, first. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it for now. Uh, hope that helps. I'll see you next time.